it's time at Dish with D. That's me. And Slim. That's him. Welcome to today's video and thank you for clicking on and making yourself a party. I am Denise. It is Wednesday and Wednesday here on this channel is D's Wednesday Wisdom for Weight Loss. Your questions answered by me. Again, let's put it out there. Do you have to agree with my answers? You don't. This is not me saying this is how it is and you should, you know, this is me giving my opinion. It may resonate with you. It might not. It may give you something to think about. So remember that I don't claim to know everything, but these are what I think on these questions. So without further ado, thank you for sending, submitting your questions in the Facebook group. If you haven't joined our Facebook group, Dish With D's Crew, you really should. It's a fun place to be and a very supportive community. They are fantastic, I will tell you. So let's get started. There was one listed in the, um, sometimes you leave them here on the video and that's fine, I always check it because you don't do Facebook. Not everybody does, I totally get that. I like to call it fake book, you know me, fake book. I'm not a huge fan of Facebook. It has its purpose, but it's too, I don't know, is what I'm looking for, just too crazy. <laughs> It's just catty. It's just, it's everybody's fake on there. It's show off book. You, you know, I just, you know, I, but it's a great way to keep in touch with people and stuff like that and belong to groups. <clears throat> so I do like it for that purpose, but I get why people aren't on it. I do. Um, somebody asked about um, fruit infused water. How do you fruit infuse your water? Do you chop it? Do you puree it? I just slice it. I mostly use lemons, oranges, um, sometimes limes. Just depends on my mood. Um, I don't puree it. No, I, I, chopping it would be too small. I mean, some people put cucumber, some people put blueberries and strawberries and raspberries. Again, whatever you, fruit you like and what you infuse the taste of your cucumbers, you put in there, you just slice them and you let them sit there a few minutes and then you add some ice and um, you'll see what you like better. I'm just more of a fan of water and I do... Um, use lemons most of the time. I, I'm a, I meant to say, I meant, meant, meant to say I'm a fan of lemon water and I pretty much just use lemons. Um, like, like I said, occasionally we don't have limes around here much too often, but mostly lemons. And that's just, and I always feel like lemons are sweeter than limes. Limes could be, tend to be a little tart in my opinion, but yeah, you just need to slice them and you can make a whole pitcher if you wanted. Um, some water bottles have an infusion tube where you stick the fruit in and you just let it, you know, fill up with water and it sits in the tube. I mean, you don't really need that. You can just, like I said, slice them and put them in your water bottle, put them in your glass, put them in a pitcher, keep that pitcher refrigerated because the fruit will go weird. So yeah, nope, no pureeing necessary. All right, that was it for that. Let's go to the Facebook group. Will you be, <laughs> this is a funny one. Let's start with a funny one. Will you be doing any more Timu hauls? It is your fault, I'm asking. I've already ordered too much stuff. Uh, right now, I am not doing any more hauls at the moment. Um, I will revisit it, I think, in April or May. I may do a couple of more, but I don't want to be... This channel is not about me doing hauls of different things. Um, but I figured it might be fun to do a Timu kitchen haul and do it as a giveaway. Like, whatever I hauled would be given away. Because do I need all this stuff? I don't. So, because they do give me um, stuff when I haul. I didn't even knew that. Um, so, yeah. They didn't give me the clothes. Those I purchased because I was interested in, you know, for the crews to get a few tank tops and stuff. And we hadn't gotten back whether we were going to continue our partnership. Um, I'm still, like I said, I don't want this to be, um, I mean, I asked them if I could do it on my other channel. They were really not too thrilled about that. I think because... Um, I get more views on this channel, so they want it to be more broad. Uh, but like I said, I, I'm not going to revisit it till probably April, end of April or something. Um, but if I do, that's what it's going to be. It's going to be, I'm hauling this, and you guys want to get to win it. So I feel that seemed something I could do and feel good about. And it was kitchen items, and you know, what kind of fun kitchen items do you need on your weight loss journey? Because there is few. Let's face it, there is a few, like kitchen scale, measuring cups, measuring spoons, scoops. Like, so I really could, you know, I think that would be fun. So, and I apologize if, I will tell you, this stuff in there is extremely affordable and it's good quality. I have not gotten anything I'm like going, ew, this is crap. These earrings I have on now are Timo. I had, I got six, this is like an out, this is the puppy heart that goes in the center of it. 
I think there are six pair for like a dollar or 49. It, it's ridiculous. And they don't bother my ears. They're just adorable. But yeah, I will leave my Timu link below. <laughs> it's 30% off your first order with them. And if you're thinking of trying them or just, you know, I took it off my app, my phone, because I, I just, you know, it, it can be addictive. I will tell you that it can be. I will warn you that ahead of time because you are getting a really good deal and you're getting really good quality. So, all right. Will you do a live or explain how to boil your eggs in the instant pot? Uh, have I done that? Well, how about next time I make them? It will not be today because we're waiting for the refrigerator. If you didn't know, my refrigerator went the other day. It is getting delivered. When you see this video, which will be tomorrow, for you it will be Thursday, it should hopefully be coming around that time. Um, I don't want to put anything in that refrigerator right now that, you know, doesn't need to be in there. But I do the 5-5-5 five, five, five method. Um, you get eggs. I usually do about eight or nine. I put them in the Instant Pot. I put a cup of water, put the lid on, close the valve, and I set it to high pressure for five minutes. It comes to pressure. It cooks them for five minutes. Then you have to, what they call it, natural pressure release, NPR for five minutes. So you'll see it counts out as an L and then it counts down. And then when you get to five, I always put a timer on, of course, because there's no timer. Um, and then when that's done, my timer rings for five minutes. I release the valve, let all the air out, and then I get a bowl of ice water and I plunge them in the ice bath for five minutes. So that's why it's five, five, five. They come out perfect every time. I mean, people have tried different, you know, they say they use the instant pot and they use the steam thing. Honestly, this works for me. My eggs feel great. If it ain't broke, I'm not fixing it. It works great. So that's the method that I use. But maybe, um, I don't know if there's going to be a meal prep this weekend. Because again, no refrigerator. You know, don't have anything to do anything. So have no milk. We have no dairies. Well, we do have some dairy. But yeah, so I don't know if there's going to be a meal prep this weekend. There's a question for you. If I don't have a meal prep, we could do a top 10 video. And let me know in the comments what top 10 you want to you hear from. My top 10 what? And we will... Maybe we'll do that for Sunday. Or we could just skip Sunday. I could take Sunday off. That'd be fun, too. <laughs> All right. So, like I said, next time I make them, I will film it. We'll put it on a um, What's the Cooking video. Do you have a set number of points you use per meal or just use all your dailies plus weeklies? I try to keep set aside six points for breakfast, six points for lunch, and 13 points for dinner. Right? It comes out to 23. Do I use all of them all the time? Mm -mm. There's times that I don't use all my breakfast points. Usually when I have overnight oats, I probably do. But like my scramble this morning that I just had, um, wind up being one for my sausage, one for my bread, and maybe one for my avocado. If I really, I actually didn't even have enough, but so that would have been at the most three points. So right, right there, I gained three points to bonus it somewhere else. I very rarely use six points at lunch. I just have it just in case. That's like my gauge. I don't want to go over those points for that meal, if that helps. Um, and then what I don't use, I usually use for snacks during the day or I put into dinner. Um, sometimes I go over points because sometimes you just want cheese. Sometimes you want a nice roll as opposed to like a wrap. So yeah, there, I do, I'm not very rigid. It has to be 23 points. I definitely go into those weeklies for treats like cheese. To me, cheese is a treat. I, I, if I'm going to add it, it needs to be worth it. So like cheeses and breads, oils, you know, I cook in olive oil. So yeah, points get used up for that. I saute my breakfast scramble in olive oil. I mean, there's not a tablespoon. Mayonnaise, I've gotten back to using mayonnaise. I've gotten back into eating um, string cheese once in a while for two points with my lunch because it's a two point cheese stick. It's not going to hurt me. So like, I think we get all in our head about food causing us distress and it really doesn't, but that's what I do. Like I said, it's just a range. I don't always use them, but it's what I allow. I don't have more than that for that set meal. A dinner sometimes does go over, you know, I mean, it's dinner. I mean, you have a steak, you know, steaks are six to eight points for a steak. A nice little, it's not really a big steak. It's, you know, a, a fattier piece of meat. You know, it's going to cost you a little bit more points. Like a pulled pork. It's going to cost me a little bit more points just for the meat. And that's not counting my side. And maybe if I have a piece of bread. Because sometimes you got to have bread with dinner. It's just like it's an Italian thing. 
So yeah, definitely um, be flexible with your points. Don't keep to a set number because in life, you're not going to live with a set number. And you have to think of down the line, not, you know, you're all in weight loss mode, but what about maintenance mode? Are you going to be able to eat this way forever? You know, I kind of like, I think of that. I, I eat as a whole. I, my life is a whole. I don't sit there and think, this is where I need to lose weight. Um, I'm never going to eat that again. You're going to eat it, you know. You can sit there and say you're not going to eat all you want. It's food. And why not? You know, just got to account for it. And that's all. That's why we have these points to do that. Okay. How long of a period of time have you ever been at a standstill in your weight loss journey? Six months. Yep. I've gained and lost the same few pounds for six months. Um, that's happened several times. Most times I quit WW and then I gain heck of a lot of weight back but this time I'm still bouncing around these same few pounds um but the one thing I'm done differently is I haven't left plus I have you <laughs> that's helped having an accountability channel where you put yourself out there so you can't you know feel sorry for yourself and say I'm done I can't do this because you have people depending on you and is it hard yes yes this is not an easy thing to do and I say this all the time losing weight is hard um, deprivation when you want to have that second helping is hard um, and sometimes you just give in and it happens and you just have to move on but yeah up to six months I've played around to save five pounds but I, I think to myself and I said this the other day and a lot of people liked it um, I'd rather struggle here than struggle where I was I'm better off where I'm at now yes I'm struggling with a few pounds but would I rather struggle with these few pounds or struggle with a hundred pounds so that, you know, we have to remember that. Look where, how far you've come. And, you know, sometimes like Weight Watchers start talking about it. Unless we, um, I'm going to say, I'm still going to, to franchise. So it's been over, it was before COVID actually. Yeah, before 2020. They started talking about maybe take a break. And, and they called it like be in maintenance for a while. Just stop the weight loss mode and just level yourself and stay where you're at. And sometimes you can do that. And then revisit the weight loss mode. Because sometimes your body needs to rest. Sometimes your body doesn't want to, your body really doesn't want to lose weight. Even though it's unhealthy, it doesn't want, it, it feels like it's a negative thing for it to lose. So we have to, you know, just kind of like go with it for a while and then revisit the weight loss mode. I like to talk about emotional part of losing weight, good or bad or happy or sad. It's all of that. It's an emotional thing. That's why I, I've said here on the channel, I can't be like, I don't know what you, I don't know what you mean, um, like strict or you should just stop or just don't do it because there's a reason that you're eating. You know, it could be emotion. It could be happy, sadness. You know, I, you know, it is a, such a personal issue with a lot of people. Not, not for everybody. Some people, it's not a, a personal issue. Some people don't feel the negativity. Some people just, it is what it is. And some people, you know, being heavy it just holds so much emotion and it's hard for, for, you know, it's, and when they struggle, they get very down on themselves and they think they can't do it. And then they stop trying and then they gain more weight. Um, I just feel like sometimes we have to talk to that little person. I always say, I've mentioned this in a lot of videos. I still, you know, to me, I'm still that chubby girl sitting on the stoop. I may be a hundred plus pounds lighter, but I'm still hurt in the inside. And just because I look different on the outside doesn't make my, you know, journey um, different. Like, it doesn't mean I don't I still have those struggles. I don't still have those tendencies. And when you realize that, you don't have all the answers for everything. Because you, you could sit here, oh, your life, you have all the answers for everything. I don't. Um, I struggle just as much as you. Uh, sometimes I mean, maybe even struggle more because I expect so much more of myself because I'm at this position. So I just have to remember that I am a human and I do error and I do eat. You know, it's it's like I don't, it's hard to sit there and be so structured not to eat. Don't eat this. Di, di, di. Life, I wish life was like that. I just wish you could just flip a switch and you wouldn't eat it. Wouldn't that be so simple? You could just flip a switch and you wouldn't eat it. It doesn't. There's a reason that you're eating it. And sometimes it's a memory. Sometimes it's, it's it's something that your mother made. You had as a child and you just want it. You know, there's no rhyme or reason. Some days you just have to 
feel the emotion. Don't eat the emotion. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes I think we eat our emotions and it doesn't go away. And then we continue to have to feed them in order you know, to deal with things. I'm sometimes dealing with why we eat and what is the reason that we're gravitating towards that and how could we maybe fit it in in a, in a more healthier, lighter way. Um, everybody's version of health is different. Um, you know, to me, it's calories in, calories out. It doesn't matter what it is, it's food. Uh, food is not inherently bad. I don't know why people want to blame food for the reason that they're the way they are. It's because I ate that. It's because I'm not eating this. It's because I'm eating that. It's calories. You have to be at a calorie deficit to lose weight. That's it in a nutshell. Um, it doesn't matter what you're eating. Um, there's no food that's going to hinder that in moderation. It's kind of like this whole erythritol thing. I don't really want to talk about this because I'm kind of done with it. When I when, I, when you're reading the article, I think it was CNN that put it out or whoever, if you read the bottom, it was based on eight people. So we're getting all emotional and all upset and, no, oh, I'm not eating that anymore, based off of eight people. Um, I always say this, and this is something I tell everybody, it's moderation. Anything in excess is bad. It just is. So if we keep everything to moderation, then life will be okay. Um, talk to your doctor if you're upset. Talk to your doctor if you're scared. Don't listen to me. Like, I'm not here to give you advice. I'm just here to tell you what, what my, how I approach things. Like, I don't know all the answers, but reading that article when it said eight people, I was like, well, eight people. So again, that's not the best judgment of that. So I always say if you're a heart patient, you know, then you call your cardiologist. He's the one that gets to decide. And, and guess what? They're going to say to you, and I've had some people say it already, hmm, what's worse, that or your 100 pounds you have to lose? There, There's the trade-off. You could sit there and not have that, but you still have 100 pounds to lose. There's no food that's perfect out there. Let me let me run that home. Let's say it again. There's no food perfect out there. And unless it's taken off the shelves, you know it's not that bad. If they're slapped with a warning label, that's when you know. So just take your knowledge and you talk to the professional. I'm not a professional. I say that all the time and I get slammed for that. I'm not. I'm a girl on a journey. Yes, I'm taking a nutrition class. Again, I still would never sit there and tell you not to eat it or to eat it. I would sit there and tell you even then. Like part of me just doesn't, you know, this class is not for me to do anything with. I'm not going to sit there and be doing private counseling. I'm not doing that because it's not my place. I just want to be educated for myself. And you know what? Even when we're taking this class, the first thing it always tells you is, Tell them to seek a professional. You're not to answer this question. You're not telling them how many calories to eat. So yeah, you have a doctor, you're paying him, you call him, you give him, you know, call the office, talk to the nurse there because she knows his philosophy. You know, I worked for a doctor for 13 years. I knew his philosophy on everything and certain subjects, what he believed, what he didn't, what he thought of this, what he thought of that. So yeah, so you'll talk to her and she'll be able to help you out. Trust me. Definitely, that's where you need to go with this. All right, when you are out of daily points but hungry, what do you eat? I don't really eat at night, and I know that's like not the answer you wanted. I, I am not a night eater, but if this was during the day, and I knew I had all my points accounted for, I would gravitate towards fruit. Fruit is something, you know, a banana. I go for the banana. I am not a lover of bananas, I'm not but they are filling and they are zero points. Yes, they have sugar. So if you're diabetic, maybe I wouldn't go for a banana. Um, another thing I, I gravitate towards is rice cakes with nut butter. And I use the powdered peanut butter because it's lower in fat, lower in calories. And it's something, it's a point. You know, it's one point for a tablespoon. I normally, you could fit that in. If you wanna have regular peanut butter, if you have three points, then use it. Again, you wanna go into weeklies, then do it. Don't feel bad about the food you eat. If you want to eat regular peanut butter, eat it. If you want to eat powdered peanut butter, eat it. Nobody's telling you that no food is inherently bad. It's what you want to spend your points and calories on. So I tend to do the rice cake with the nut butter. It's good stuff. And sometimes I put Lily's chips on there. Sometimes I put cinnamon on top of that nut butter. Yeah, and the rice cake, I, it's funny that I gravitate towards rice cakes because it feels like, but they're crunchy. And it's a great vehicle for the peanut butter. Um, I do like the chocolate or the caramel. 
I mean, the plain one's okay, but the caramel one, yes, it's two points, but man, with that peanut butter, it's a three point snack. Or if you, if you use regular nut butter, well, I tend to use the um, Nuts and More or the American Dream. Somebody sent me a couple jars, um, which is two points for a tablespoon for some of their flavors. Um, the ones that have the less mix-ins are actually less points. You, you, have, you know, you have to, you know, weigh it all out. Put on your scale, 14 grams. <laughs> you know, you do that, you spread it out. It's some good stuff, I'm telling you. Um, popcorn, hot air popcorn is always a good option. And I was watching a show. No, it wasn't a show, it was a video. And they were making popcorn. And in a frying pan. And he put, I think he poured oil. I think it was oil. At first I thought it was soda. And I thought, what if you threw like a cream soda at the bottom of the frying pan instead of oil and you pop the popcorn in it? I wonder if it tastes like kettle corn. I love I, kettle popcorn. I love sweet popcorn. Um, but then again, you have all those popcorn sprinkles. Amazon, Weight Watcher sells them at their meeting, you know, flavor caramel. A little sprinkle, put some spray butter on there and a little bit of caramel seasoning. People love cinnamon on their popcorn. People love nutritional yeast. Of course, I'm going from sweet to savory. Just depends on what you like. I like a little Parmesan cheese. It's good powdered peanut butter. I mean, again, popcorn's another vehicle. It's zero point food. Again, a tablespoon and a half, I think, makes three cups of popcorn, which is a serving. Stick to the serving size of popcorn. A serving size is not gonna throw you over the edge, but if you're making, you're just pouring kernels into a bowl, letting them pop, you don't know how much you're eating, eh, not the best idea. I always think it's always err on the side of knowing a serving. Look at your serving size of foods, even your zero point foods, and you will see, I believe a tablespoon and a half is a serving of, which makes three cups of pop popcorn, which, and stick to that. And, you know, I just don't eat at night from, we know why, but I just, and so it's hard for me to, you know, but maybe an apple. I know Nikki gets fit, eats an apple at night. It's sweet. Um, what I would suggest is again, the peanut butter. Dip the apple in the peanut butter or coat the apple in the powdered peanut butter. Slice it. I mean, it's a, it gives it a little bit of something, something, you know, or make apple nachos. She makes them all the time and you're not gonna get a lot of points that way. And it's still a fruit, it's still a zero point food. And it's still something a little bit sweet. Like fruit tends to be sweet. So that's, some people like the frozen grapes with the um, jello. I've never done that. <laughs> I guess I, I just like grapes the way they are, but that's what they do. So that's always an option as well. All right, I just bought a new spice, smoky paprika. Have you used it? And if you have, have you good ideas to use it on? Um, favorite uncommon spices. Um, smoked paprika I adore versus regular paprika. I feel that it gives it a smoky background. Um, it's great with uh, chilies, meats. Um, I put on everything actually. Not a lot. Remember, don't be putting a table teaspoon on. Do a half, a quarter, and see how because it's very strong. But it's really good with meats. It's really good with chilies and like vegetables. It gives like a nice anything you want to have a smokiness to, like especially like. Mexican food, it tends to go really well with. Um, Spanish food, it tends to go really well with. I love smoked paprika. But remember, less is more. That's sitting with skinny syrup. Sometimes I, people weren't liking them because they were using too much. Sometimes less is more. So I definitely like doing that with um, smoked paprika. And that's right, I never used it. And then I don't know what made me buy it. It was at the Amish Bulk store. I'm like, oh, it, sm it smelled amazing. I'm like, oh, yeah, this looks good. Uncommon spices, Trader Joe's. Just go in Trader Joe's and look at their spices. They have some really cool. They have an umami one, which is a mushroom one. That's really good. Um, their citrusy garlic is really good. They have a furikake, which is what we put on. It's like a Japanese seaweed. That's a Trader Joe's. I just, I've been really into Trader Joe's spices. They're affordable. Only problem is sometimes they're seasonal. So I would say go there. And every time you go, just check out their spices. They make a great pickle one. They have a ranch one. They have a cheese one. They have a salmon one. They have a pizza one. They have a ketchup one. Their onion salt is fantastic. Um, yeah, so I would definitely say Trader Joe's. Um, I've been really obsessed lately. Um, I was into Flavor God for a while. They just are just online only. And I can go to my Trader Joe's and, I, and spend less money, get a better variety. You know, I, I, I was into Flavor God during shutdown because we couldn't go anywhere. So... I was ordering online so i do enjoy those spices um or if you go to the amish bulk store 
they have some fun ones. I got one there. It was called a mustard onion powder. So I'm thinking maybe I'm going to um, get some pretzels and see if I can coat them with this mustard onion powder. I'm telling you, Amish bulk stores are where it's at. If you have one or you, you know, or you, you're, where your children live and you're visiting them, always look in your area for an Amish bulk store. Hi D, last week I went off plan for two days and lost my momentum. What do you do to stay on plan on those days when you're barely hanging on? I always post in the group. Because somebody will reach out and somebody will throw you a lifeline. Sometimes you just need somebody to say a kind word. Kindness goes a long way and I say this all the time. You can't give somebody a negative comment like, oh, just stop. Look how far you've come. I mean, I say look how far you've come too, but sometimes that could be a negative way. Um, kindness. You have to show them kindness and compassion. Um, it's hard. And yeah, we fall off the wagon a lot. And you just need to know, guess what? It's okay. You know what? Next meal, back on track. It happens. Um, it does, it does ruin your mojo because when you're so focused and then you have this go off the deep end, done it many times. You need to get back to the straight and narrow. It's not easy. It isn't. Um, only like, like I said, I will say post in the group, post to them, let them give you that hug, that virtual hug. Cause maybe that's what it is. Maybe you're alone doing this and you just need somebody to say a kind word to you and say, you know what? It's done. You've done it. You can't go back and change it. You just need to move on. And sometimes, you know, and know that it's okay. It's okay to have a, a bad couple of days. You just have to get back, get to tracking. I will tell you, I'm, I'm going to put myself out there saying this. My tracking has been horrible, horrible since we lost the wins. I have no idea why that would make a difference because it's not like we were getting really good stuff. Um, I have no idea. But we lost the wins in the summer. And I would say... I, I track very inconsistently. Um, I definitely track during the week. It's not, it's just not consistent enough. And I know that's why my results are very flip floppy because I'm not consistent in my tracking. And for me, I need to see it. And I know this and I still make these mistakes. So Karen, you're not alone about making mistakes. I make them all the time. And I'm sitting here putting myself out there saying sometime I'm a schlep. Yep, it's not something you want to admit. You know, here you are in a YouTube channel. You're saying that you don't do what you should do. I don't. And I don't know why I don't. I wish I did. I feel like I'm in this limbo phase of just, I wanted this plan to change. It, personal points was killing me, so I claimed. And here we are, plan has changed. Back to the blue for all intent purposes. It's the blue foods. It's 23 points a day and nothing has changed for me. I'm still flip-flopping. So honestly then, it wasn't the plan. It's me. It's me not being consistent, not being diligent. And but why? If if I could only put my finger on why, um, I guess I'm just I'm a human person. I don't. This is not my whole life. You know, this journey. I have other things going on. And maybe when you when you finally spread your wings and realize that this isn't all you have, and then it just takes a back seat. I, I just you know all I can say is. I keep trying and I want you to keep trying. And like I said, put it out there. When you, when you strip down and you expose yourself, um, you're honest and you've just put it out there. So I think sometimes putting it down for something like a post helps. It really does. It helps when somebody posts it because it helps for yourself because you put it out there to the world. You've said it. Sometimes we keep it in our head. It just sits there. But when we express it, it's like when I expressed my weight, I never told people what I weighed. Even I think when I started this channel, I don't think I mentioned my weight. Um, it was very hard. You know, and my family never knew what I weighed. You never tell your, we never tell our husbands what we weigh, you know? And then I think it came out on one of my car ramblings to work. And I said it and I didn't mean to say it just came out. And I'm like, I could have not put the video up. And I thought to myself, you need to let it go. You need to let it go. And I did. And it was very freeing. And then I came home and told my family what I weighed. <laughs> I mean, then it was, I think, I was 185 when I told them. And I said I was 270. And they just, like, were dumbfounded or gobsmacked is the word. Yeah, because 
and then when I tell people, they look at you like, you, you wait, like the you, people don't really, you know, especially when you carry it a certain way, it doesn't look quite as bad. Um, I knew what it was because I knew how things fit and I knew that I couldn't shop in Kohl's because their three X's were too tight. Yeah, that was a sad time. And my son worked at Kohl's and he'd be like, mom, there's sales. You can, why don't you come shopping? And I'd go shopping and I'd try stuff on and nothing fits. And it was, it was very depressing because it's just, it's just a, you know, I don't fit in, and it's a three X. You think to yourself, a three X? Like, and in my mind, I was a one X. <laughs> so when you remind us you have your problem, I mean, we don't, I mean, you know, let's face it, all our clothes are stretched. So it probably was a one X in my closet, but, and you go in the, and a new three X is tight. It's very sad and depressing. So what do you do? You go home and you eat. Hashtag human. Yep, so that was just going against everything that I was doing. And I finally got hold and, um, you know, now I can go and close and shop. I cl oh. And when you're when you're a big girl, you can get nothing in clearance. But I just go in there and to get mediums and larges, it's like, it's such a thrill. Um, just to get a, you know, to go shop. I think I showed you I had a skirt in last week's um, haul. I think I did on my vlog day. It was a junior's. Granted, it was a junior's like extra large, but it's still a junior skirt. And I never would have fit in something like that. And honestly, it was, I didn't think I should get it because it was a little bit youthful. But I mean, just because you can doesn't mean you should. But I thought, the only thing I thought would be really cute for the, for the cruise, I probably wouldn't wear it around here, but um, I thought it'd be cute on the boat, on the deck, or maybe over my bathing suit or something. Um, but yeah, it's very life changing. And it's, it's, because again, you're still that chubby girl on the inside. So if you go to the group, post in the group, somebody will throw you a lifeline. Echoing, I am at a plateau right now. And I'm losing motivation. What can I shake things up to get things moving again? A few things that I suggest is if you're eating the same foods, we get in the ruts, there's foods we like. I'm, I'm guilty of that. I love overnight oats. Um, at one point I was having them several times a week. I was, um, that was a while ago though. Um, maybe change up what you're eating. Eat things that you don't normally eat. I would never say eat less because I don't think that's the best advice. Um, track calories. You know what, make sure you're at your, the right, if you're maybe you're too low. And let me tell you something, if you're not eating the correct amount of calories, you're not gonna lose. You have to eat enough. And if you're a person who works out, you might even have to eat a little bit more. Um, change that, um, just the ever famous, you know, the cliche things, drink some more water and move more. They're so cliche. I know, but they do like, or maybe you're doing a certain, um, workout or a fitness routine, do something different, you know, do something like some people were saying like, um, cardio versus like certain things burn calories and certain things burn fat so look up you know if you're at a doing exercise that burns only calories maybe you should do something that burns fat i don't know what that is because because i keep thinking I, i'm you know maybe with my exercise i've been doing these walking videos for since 2020 we are in 2023 um it's been a long time maybe i need to change up my fitness routine maybe i you know you see all these um on youtube the guy comes on if you're doing this to burn calories you're not gonna lose weight and I'm like, maybe he's hanging by the thing. I think you've ever seen him. So maybe it's time to start burning fats. I mean, I, but here's the bottom line. You got to continue to do it. Um, that's why, why I hesitate. I don't want to start something just for the sake of what it's going to do. It has to be something I can continue. That's why I do enjoy the walking because I do enjoy doing it. So I have to even look in within myself. What do I need to do? So it's always there the same thing. Change up what you're eating. Increase your water and change up your exercise routine. Um, also, when I say water, I don't mean to say, go and have 60 ounces a day. I think that's a lot to expect people to do. Um, if you're not drinking any, then maybe just start out with a glass at every meal. You know, try um, not eating after dinner. Try do People love the window thing. Doesn't work for me, but it might work for you where they just eat within an eight hour window. So they don't eat after dinner. I will tell you, once you get into that habit of not eating after dinner, you don't really crave it. It's like anything else. When it becomes a habit, you don't look for it. 
So maybe you're eating too much late at night and it's not enough time to burn it off. So maybe that could be a consideration. But those are the things that I tend to gravitate towards. We all know that 300-pound person eats more calories than a 150-pound person. And no matter what diet the person follows, no matter how that person keeps track, the fact to lose weight, you have to be in a calorie deficit. I think I've already said that. True. As you reduce your weight, do you reduce your calories and points? Yes. Um, apps will do that for you. Like if you have an, a weight loss app, it will definitely, it'll definitely reduce your points and calories. Anyone you do, if you do a calorie app, it will reduce it. If you do Weight Watchers, you know, you the heavier people start off at higher points because you can't start off at what my points are. That's too low. So you have to start out and you just kind of titrate it down. So you, your body gets used to just eating less and less and less. It's not healthy to go from eating 5,000 calories to eating 1,300 calories. You would think, well, that's what, at the goal weight you need to be, that's what you need to eat. But when you're at this X amount of weight, you need to titrate down. So, yes, um, I would say an app should tell you that, whatever app you're using. I, I can't tell you that because, again, so I would sit there and say you definitely, you know, there's my fitness pal for calories. Healthy app does calories and the old blue plan, and you only have to track once. That's a great thing. You track once, and it gives you points and calories. So I kind of think that's, you know, if uh, I recommend an app, it would probably be the healthy app. It's $27, $28 for the whole year, you know, and, and it gives the old blue points. I mean, which is basically the zero point foods we're having now. It's just the algorithm is the smart points algorithm versus this is the points algorithm, which it's. I don't know how different it is. It's a little bit different for certain foods. Like my string cheese <laughs> went up to two. Um, I think the rice cake went up to two. The caramel, I think the caramel used to be one. I don't remember though. My pretzels went up to two. So certain things did change with this algorithm. But honestly, if you're following any plan, any plan, if you're following anything, it will work. Even the old blue plan, it will. Just because the science changed, you know, calories in, calories out. And those apps also, if you um, have your Fitbit or your Apple Fitness in with those, they will increase if you work out heavily and it wants you to eat more because if you're burning X amount, you need to eat X amount. It's just for healthy weight loss. It's not saying, you know, there's a reason they tell you to eat more. So you really need to listen to it. More one and done recipes, please. Yes, that's, you know, that's my thing. Um, I don't do well with plates of, I mean, trays of food. You know, I, I've said it a million times. I have a problem with food. I have an addiction. And if there's something in there that I want bad enough, I'm going to eat it. So if it's not there, I can't eat it. So for me, one and done is the way to go, especially for desserts and sweets. Again, and I will say this again, which I've said in, in the lives, and, I, and I'm going to say this again. And um, just because you have the points to eat something doesn't necessarily mean you should. I know it's going to be it's going to be a lot of criticism for that. Should you have dessert every day? No, you shouldn't. I say this all the time. Desserts should be definitely during the week. I'm not saying never have them, but I would never have it. I don't think you should have a dessert every day. Should we in life have dessert every day? But I have the points for it. Yes, but what are you not eating to have the points up for that dessert? You know, make sure you're getting your fats in. Make sure you're getting your protein in. Your carbohydrates, your healthy carbohydrates. We are so carb scared that we're not eating bread. Well, here's the thing. You got to eat bread. Should we know what we're eating carb-wise? Sure we should. Should we be carb conscious? Yes, we should. We should definitely, being older, we should definitely be con conscious of our carbs. I try to keep my carbs 110, no more than 110, which is pretty good. I mean, keto, they want an under 50. So yeah, if you're at 110, one doctor told one of my lovelies that they thought 35 carbs per meal was a, was a good clip. That works out good too. So it's definitely not low carb. It's just being conscious of our carbs. Should we be eating more protein? Yes, we should. Should we be eating, like there's people out there saying, there's people out there eating 100 grams of protein. I don't know. Again, I keep my protein around 80 to 85. Why? Because it's something I can continue. I don't have to buy a lot of, like to get those 100 and some grams of protein, you're going to have to be buying a lot of supplements. If that's something you want to do, then go for it. I am not something that's something I'm going to be able to continue to do for the rest of my life. So that's 
for me doesn't work. So again, you get a number that's decent. And for me, that is 85. So I got on the subject, but so that's where I try to keep things normal, something you're able to continue. Remember, what you do to lose weight, you have to maintain it. And to sit there and be having all this protein now and then down the line, you don't. What happens? That's the fear I have. So if I can keep something that's maintainable through my weight loss, through the rest of my lifestyle, then that's good. So you have to remember, keep these things in the back of your head. Okay, how long did it take you to lose your weight and now do you eat when you first start? How long did it take you to lose your weight and now did you eat when you first started WW? Um, took me, I would say close to two and a half years to lose the weight. Um, I eat foods I like. I eat foods not because they're low in point. Or this or that. I like them. Like you would sit there and say, well, this day, this is something, this is interesting. Um, I like interesting things. This is something I can buy locally. Um, it's interesting. And it's, it's kind of a Danish. It has this interesting grams of protein. Do I recommend you buying them? No, you don't have to buy it. I just like to show things that I find that are interesting and just something that tweaks my interest. I don't ever sit there and tell you, oh, you need to go out and buy this. This is fantastic. You need to eat this. No, you don't. <laughs> but if you like something like that and you want to try it, then yeah, GNC sells it. And like I said, I love the fact that you go to local GNC and we all pretty much have them, at least in within a, a driving distance to find those. But I try to eat what I eat and it's food that I'm continuing to eat. That's why like I use weeklies because I am not on a diet. Well, technically, I need to eat regular food that I'm going to eat forever. You know, I don't say I'm not going to, I can't, I don't eat this. I don't like the erythritol thing. I like the monk fruit sweetener. I'm going to continue to use it. Um, do I eat a crap ton of it? No. Again, not having desserts every day. Back to that. I, you know, when you have something every day, it doesn't become a special treat. It becomes part of your meal. And then you, what are you going to do when you get tired of it? You got to find something to replace it. So if you're not having it as often, same thing with built bars. I'm lucky if I, I'm lucky if I have one a week and that's on a stretch and half the time I share it. It's not something I eat all the time. And what is, you know, treats versus snacks? There's a difference. There's a difference between a treat and there's a difference between a snack. And I do have a video for that. And I remember to link it. I will link it at the end because nobody wants to stop watching a video. So I will link, I did a whole thing about the difference between snacks and treats. And there is a huge difference and a huge mentality behind it. So I'll definitely link that for that question because, and I eat the same foods I started that I eat now and there's nothing, I don't rule out food. <laughs> it's, you know, there's things that, you know, there's nothing that I eat that's going to hurt me. You know, like I don't eat enough of something that's going to hurt me. Uh, I eat what I like and that's what you have to do. You have to love your food. And I say that all the time. That's what I'm trying to say when I'm my, what I eat, if I don't remember to say it, but love what you eat. When you love what you eat, you want to eat it. If you're eating it because it's low in points and low in calories, that's not a reason to eat something. You got to eat it because you like it. Love your food. You have to. That's something you'll learn after a while because you're eating something. You're just like, I don't really, I don't, it's, it's okay. You want to be like, I look forward to eating every day. I look forward right before I'm going to eat. I get so, you see it. I get, I get excited because it. I get excited and that's what I want for you. Get excited about your food. Love it. I look at that food and my eyes and my mouth waters. It, it's just because it's food that you love. And there's ways to tweak your recipes to keep them so you can enjoy them. Like you're not going to eat something that's going to cost you 15 points. You're not going to, you're going to be feeling guilty eating it. And this is 15 points. And you shouldn't feel bad about it, but that's the mentality of it. So is there a way we can lower that, but not sacrifice that flavor? And you just have to work on that. Can you make a cookbook? <laughs> I've been asked that a million times. All my recipes are on my website for free. If you can go and grab them. I do think about it. I I just don't know. It's 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 an it's one of those things that's it's an endeavor. But my idea for a cookbook, if I were to do one, which I have not said I am, would definitely be taking one base recipe and how you can take this recipe and tweak it to a million different things. 
and that's what like with the cookie like the one and done cookie um the mug i mean the, the whoopie pie the whoopie pie is very basic but you change a flavor here and there and it tastes totally different you change the filling it tastes totally different but it's the same base recipe the flour is the same you have the yogurt in there you have a little bit of sweetener in there you have some vanilla so it makes a little cake batter and you put cocoa in there it makes a chocolate then you cut it in half and your filling could be cream cheese could be whipped cream could be marshmallow and if you can flavor that to be like have a mint flavor or a peanut butter filling so you have one base recipe and you just tweak one or two things and it changes it completely but it's still fantastic so that would be my envision of a cookbook if i ever did one would be like how can i take this you know chapters would be like whoopie by chapter and how you can take one base recipe and make 10 15 20 different things from it and that's what i do i mean it's it's just having the base basics and just tweaking the flavors extracts spices you know i have every extract known to man because it changes everything and I, the same thing with spices it changes everything and different like seasonings going to trader joe's the seasoning aisle it changes everything you can have avocado toast taste three or four different ways with just a seasoning tweak so that is it i went on way too long i hope you enjoyed this video if you did, give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section if you have any answers to these that, you know, again, you don't have to agree with me. This is just my opinion, my channel. But let me know your, I love hearing everybody else's opinion as well. I am open to hear everything. You know, I am not, it's not all about me. That's why I do this, this video, it's because it's all about you. So let me know down below your responses to any of these things. I'd love to hear it. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Join us here at Dish with D. We are slaying our weight loss one pound at a time. So I will dish with you another day. Tomorrow is food fight. No, it's today. Today's Wednesday. Because <laughs> I'm filming tomorrow's video too. Tomorrow is vlog day here on the channel. And you will get to spend the day with me. And we have a few fun things planned. So I will see you tomorrow for the vlog. Friday for food find, which I already filmed and it's already uploaded. I'm in. Okay. Have a great rest of your day. Leave a comment below if there's something you want me to tackle next week. And I will dish with you another day. Goodbye, my lovelies.